what have you liked so far in the first two weeks going into the third week now from your inside linebackers in spring practice? I've been, uh, hey, Scott, uh, appreciate the question. Thanks, guys. Um, uh, just, just really just impressed with their demeanor and their work ethic, the way they attack every day uh, to this point. Uh, it's been, it's been, uh, it's been something that, that, that's really sticks out to me is I, I show up into the meeting room, they show up into the meeting room and they're locked and loaded, ready to go. Uh, just thirsty for, for any little tidbit that'll, uh, help them improve their craft. Uh, I think when we get out on the field, the guys play with, uh, uh, with that elite eat that we're talking about, we're continuing to work on our style of play, uh, and our brand, the way that we play football, but I just, I've just been blown away by the way these guys attack everything that they do uh, with the with really a bulldog mentality. Is that how Will Harbor has gotten to the point where he is now with that mentality, with also his physical abilities? A absolutely, he is. Uh, he's extremely intentional about everything that he does. Nothing's just thrown up against the wall, and 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 sort of see what sticks type deal. He is a guy that. Uh, if we give him a specific task, he's going to specifically attack that task uh, and, and work on those things. Uh, leadership wise, he's the same way. He's been that way since he got here. He's intentional to get out there and talk with the, uh, with his teammates, with his peers, uh, be seen. Uh, he, he's an impressive young man. And also, when you've got a group of linebackers that have experience but are still relatively young, is that advantageous as a coach that you can? still develop some things with them? I, I, I definitely think so. Uh, I, I'm excited about that piece of it is uh, they don't know what they don't know, but they've been under the lights as well. So it's our, it's my job as a coach to continue to uh, teach them and train them. Uh, but I know that with this group that we have, the moment's not too big for them. Uh, they've been under the bright lights. Uh, they've obviously played in big games. They've seen those things. They understand the speed of the game. Uh, so it, it's exciting because we can just keep continuing to get better uh, at really all the details and fine tuning how we play linebacker here at Navy. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. Go to Phil, Berg. you. Phil Bergman. Coach, uh, you mentioned the bulldog mentality. What other traits do you look for in a linebacker? You know, Phil, it, not much has changed. You know, we're looking for guys uh, that we call OKGs. That, that's our kind of guy. And every guy that I've recruited in here uh, is smart, tough, and loves football. And the number one thing is that they're leaders. And we're going we're gonna to take them and we're going to work with them and keep, continue to develop that leadership. Um, and that, that's our influence on the guys that we have around them. But those are, those are the things that we're looking for. Number one, leadership. But then uh, we want to see guys that are smart, guys that are tough, and guys that love ball. Uh, specifically Ramos and Fletcher, we saw them last year. What have you seen out of uh, this group of now rising sophomores? I, I just see, see guys that show up every day, just wanting to get better. Um, they have that mentality, that growth mentality where uh, it's not, uh, it, it, it's funny that we were just talking about this. They don't see themselves as guys that, that have arrived. Uh, they see their blemishes and want to work on those blemishes to continue to improve and get better. And, and really, when your 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 best guys have that mentality and continue to work that way, everybody in the room works that way. Uh, Ramos, uh, he, he uh, you know he he'll have for most most people a, a a pretty doggone good practice and be beating himself up uh, out of a play or two that that didn't go the way that he wants it and sees that that's an opportunity for him to get better. And Fletch is the same way. I love, I love the way that they attack uh, everything on the practice field in the meeting room. Thank you. Thank you. Bill Wagner. Good to see you, PJ. Hey, great seeing you, Wags. So uh, let's talk about Harbor a little bit. Um, you know, he, he missed six games last year. He only played half a season. Number one, is he healthy? Is he able to, is he full go? Is he, you know, practicing in pads and hitting this spring. He's out there practicing in pads. Uh, we keep him out of some things, keep him in some things. Uh, he's getting a good amount of reps at practice, though, and, and he's doing a, a heck of a job. Really impressed with him so far.
Well, obviously he has a similar body type to Diego and coach Newberry said on a recent presser that he was definitely recruited to play the mic, that that's definitely his position a little more. He played will just because he was the next best guy last season at the beginning of the year. Um, do you, how's he doing? Is he seizing the role? I mean, do you see him stepping into that or is he in a battle with, uh, I guess, Blizzard is listed behind him. I'm, uh, I'm extremely excited about Will Harbor and, and what he's done. And, and, you know, in the off season, we met with every linebacker uh, and talked about the guys that are the leaders of the room. And his name came up from every single guy that I met with. Uh, I, I mentioned it earlier. He's intentional about his leadership uh, and what he brings to the table. I've seen a ton of growth from him in terms of knowledge of the scheme, uh, understanding where his fits are in the run game and the pass game. Uh, but I've been I've been e extremely impressed on him uh, just changing his body, uh, it, it getting uh, working on exactly what we we talked about. He needed to work on in terms of lower body body flexibility, uh, his ankles, his knees, his hips. Uh, he looks extremely explosive. I'm I'm very pleased with him. Um, now you, you know man, we we got to get the best guys ready to play and he's certainly up there and, and we've got some other guys that are competing for those, those spots too uh it's a very talented room so i mean it's kind of a double-edged sword with harbor on one hand you don't want him to feel the pressure he doesn't need to be diego fago um there won't be another diego fago for quite some time at navy but at the same time it's an important position and you did lose a fiery leader who was kind of the heart and soul of the defense and you, you do want somebody or people, multiples, to kind of to step into that role. So how do you kind of approach it with Harbor as far as, you know, you don't want him to feel the pressure of being Diego Fago, but he does have to give you some of what Diego brought. Yeah, I, I think everybody has, uh, every, every team has a different heartbeat, uh, a, a different pulse, a different, uh, just a different feel to them. And Will is Will is an exceptional leader, as are a lot of guys in that room. And, and obviously, you know, to 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 quote Rick Pitino, you know, uh, Diego's not walking through the door. You know what I mean? And it it what it's going to take is, is a bunch of guys uh, that are able to collectively play to the level that we need them to play to, so we can be successful out there. And I think we got a, a bunch of guys that are up to the task. Uh, I, I'm really excited about this group. Uh, I, I don't know if I've been excited about a, a group collectively in my, in my coaching career. Uh, I think we've got some really, really good football players uh, in the linebacker room that are going to make a lot of people proud and, and a lot of people excited about Navy football and Navy defense. So how is the battle at will between Ramos and Fletcher? They both got playing time last year. Fletcher actually saw most of his time at that. I don't even want to say it was the striker because it was kind of a different position when he was over there uh in that scheme that coach Newberry was using but then he moved inside um so obviously he's probably still learning a little bit but Ramos obviously a guy came on late last season and started the army game is there a battle there or is one guy ahead of the other you know they're they're competing there right now uh Ramos is a little bit ahead of of Fletcher right now but he's right there uh nipping at him and and they're really about neck and neck uh been extremely pleased with them in the in the way that they're both playing out out uh, on the practice field I see guys flying around I'd say knowledge wise they're 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 pretty even uh, and I, I think that's a big thing for us is that we've got to be able to play uh, multiple linebackers and not just have to put a guy out there and, and let him uh, stay out there Diego and I were just talking about that the other day you, you know last year we we're we we're banged up didn't have as many guys uh uh, that I would like to have uh, that you could put in a game. And he was tired uh, in the Notre Dame game down in the red zone. And he's looking at me trying to get off the field. And I'm like, man, you got to keep going. I, I don't see that being the case this year. I see us being able to stay fresh, uh, having guys out there that can continue to play to our standard. I think um, we've played extremely hard uh, here at Navy uh, the last three years, but I think we're going to crank it up a notch this year. Uh, because the amount of guys that we're going to be able to play at the linebacker position this year. I expect both those guys to have huge, huge impacts on football games this season. Thanks, Coach. Thank you.
All right, we'll make another uh, trip around. Scott Wyckoff. Coach, how important is it to have now players that are full recruiting classes for Coach Newberry in his defense, in what he wants to see in a, a linebacker? I think it's uh, it's it's critical. I mean, to, to have guys that were recruited to play in this scheme uh, is something that 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 every coach wants. And I think you're going to see us uh, be a little bit more athletic at linebacker than we have been uh, in the past and, and at a lot of positions across the field. But we had some really, really good players here uh, before. And, you know, what I think Coach New does better than than probably anybody um, is you know, we just don't dust off the same playbook um, because that's what we did before. He, he's going to look at our guys, our personnel, uh, and say that these are what these guys do well, or this is what this guy does well, and put them in positions to be successful. Uh, so when we get guys that uh, we recruited to play in, in, you know, the scheme and what he wanted to do, it just gives him more opportunity to be creative uh, and put guys in a lot of different spots and be simple for us, uh, but difficult for opposing offenses to defend. Great, thanks. Thank you. Bill Bergman. Coach, uh, Coach Newberry's talked a lot about uh, wanting players to be more vocal out on the field so far this year. Who's some of the vocal guys for your position group? Yeah, I, I've had a lot of guys stick out uh, in terms of that, but I, I would say Will Harbor, uh, and, and Terrell Adams are two guys that bring a, a ton of leadership, two of the older guys. Um, but we, we talk in our room, period, about, you know, your leadership is your influence on others. And you, you have an opportunity to influence everybody, someone, every play. And I've seen a lot of guys, I've seen Gianni Woodson Brooks uh, take a huge step this offseason. Uh, I've seen Colin Ramos take a huge step this offseason. I've seen Tyler Fletcher take a huge step. I've seen Luke Thiemann. I mean, we can just go. Uh, I've seen Ch Trent Chiraki. I mean, it, uh, I've seen uh, Chase and Buckner. I mean, it it just every every play, every opportunity, every minute that we're out there, uh, guys have a, a chance to influence the people around them and, and provide leadership. And collectively, I've been really, really impressed with this group. I know I said that a few times, but uh, I – Hopefully you guys can tell I'm excited about these guys, and I think you guys will be too. Then no, uh, just more of a lighthearted question, the neck rolls, neck restrictors. Uh, you don't see them too much these days. What are your thoughts on uh, that piece of equipment? Yeah, if, if, if it's necessary, then, uh, th then we'll wear them. Um, but, yeah, it, when you roll up into uh, the linebacker room wearing a neck roll, you get busted up pretty good. Uh, we're trying to stay out of that stereotype, but if Jim Barry just says says uh, a guy's got to wear him, then a guy's got to wear him. Hopefully, uh, we we can be more of a shoulder tackling team and uh, and stay out of those bad boys. Thank you, Wags. So you mentioned a couple other guys, Woodson Brooks. Um, you know, I think uh, somebody, I think it may have been Coach Newberry or someone mentioned um, uh, Terrell Adams. Um, do you think would you be liking to take six guys on the travel roster as basic considering special teams? I presume you want your guys to contribute on special teams, right? Absolutely. You know, and that's how a lot of those young guys got uh, got their start last year. You know, you look at a guy like Tyler Fletcher, he was on punt return uh, and then he sort of graduated from punt return to kickoff and then did well on kickoff and then found his way out on uh, out on to uh, the field for us defensively, you know, is same thing with Colin Ramos. You know, he uh, was working his tail off on the scout team. Then he got on punt return then he got on kickoff. And then uh, all of a sudden he's starting against Temple and then in, in the army game as well. So uh, we'll be as good uh, as we can be special teams wise when all the linebackers can contribute on special teams and coach will tell you, I mean, we'll take, we'll take more than six if, if we need to take more than six because those guys are are playing on the core four special teams units and dominating on there. Uh, so that's a huge emphasis in our room is, is be guys that can play on the core four unit, be guys that are reliable, dependable, trustworthy, that are going to go out there and compete their butts off uh, for, for every single inch when we're out there. So absolutely. So uh, we've mentioned every single guy that was on the depth chart going into spring camp, Harbor, Blizzard, Woodson Brooks at Mike, Ramos, Fletcher, Adams at Will, 
has there been a young guy that that is not among those six names that has jumped out at you this uh, spring? So, you know, the, the two guys that have really jumped out at me are Gianni Woodson, Brooks, and Colin Ramos, who are on there. Uh, and I really think Fletcher on Thursday and then Saturday uh, has taken a huge jump as well. And I know those guys are on the, the depth chart. Some guys that are not on the depth chart that have really – impressed me is, is Luke Thiemann, uh, a freshman that was on scout team last year. He's done a great job. Uh, got, a, got, got a long way to go, uh, just like a, all of us, but uh, I, I've seen some good instinctual things from him. He's a physical playmaker. And then I've been really impressed with Trent Shiraki as well. Uh, and he's an older guy, uh, but getting an opportunity to get out there and make some plays, uh, he know, knowing what to do, flying around, playing our style of football. Uh, been really impressed with him as well. And, and just because I didn't mention a guy doesn't mean that he's not playing his tail off. Uh, but we got a we got a high standard around here, obviously. What did you learn from your experience in the lineup last year that you really think is going to help you through the remainder of this spring and into the season? Uh, a lot of it is like uh, just how hard it is to win and how hard I need to work and how uh, to help others around me work um, and get to that ability so we can go out and win football games. How fired up were you to get back on the field in spring practice? Oh, I, I'm so happy and excited just to be out there running around again with, uh, with the Blue Moon Brothers. Even though you're still considered a, a younger player uh, with your time at the Naval Academy, moving forward in the next season do you do you feel the responsibility of leadership um I'm just uh feel a little bit of it um especially playing Mike linebacker you know you kind of control the defense in a sort of way uh make checks and calls and all that stuff so uh, I feel that responsibility um but really it's just working hard and making sure everybody like uh just lead by example really so what I'm trying to do thanks Will thank you Bill Bergman Will, uh, last year you won the Admiral Mack Award. You know better than most um, what a good spring practice can do. Um, what's your advice to players on the team as they head in and compete during spring ball? Uh, throughout spring ball, uh, effort is one of the main things that is being looked at. So I think if you go in uh, working as hard as you can, running to the ball every single play, just doing everything you can to show um, how hard you're working and how much you care about the game, uh, you will get the coach's eyes. You switched your number to 54. You're going to be replacing a 54 in the middle. Um, knowing those shoes that you have to fill, what's that going to be like for you? Uh, you know, I really look the, look up to him. Uh, he inspires me in a lot of different ways. But, you know, I, I'm just going to continue to work hard, you know, ask him questions, continue to learn from him, but then just continue to grind and just get better, get better every day. Now, lastly, you kind of touched on this already, but what do you love so much about the mic position? Uh, you you take control out there. Everything, most, basically everything is dependent on you and the calls you make. Uh, it's what I played in high school, so it's what I'm used to. Just uh, I really enjoy being in control and um, taking that responsibility. Thank you. Bill Wagner. Will, talk about last year. You opened the season as the starter, and then you had some nagging injuries, and you wound up playing six games. Was how frustrating was that? And you know, what do you know? How do you bounce back from a season which wasn't what you thought it would be? Uh, you know, it's extremely frustrating, but uh, it happens. It's the game of football. Um, I signed up for it, so those injuries happen to everybody. Um, you know, um, what 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 else do you want? Well, just kind of how you bounce back. I mean, I, I think that you you missed the bulk of the games down the stretch. So, you know, I don't know when's the last time you played a football game for Navy. Yeah, late October, uh, I think. I believe when we played Memphis, that's when I got hurt. But uh, bounce back from it. I mean, just continue to work hard, uh, get healthy again, the whole body healthy. Uh, so just continue to work hard. Uh, you know, at the at the end of the year, it gave a lot of young people uh, a chance to play. So that'll be that was really good for us. Uh, get some good opportunity. Um, look forward to this season. Are you fully healthy? Yes, sir. So with regard to, 
moving over to Mike, I mean, I think that's your natural position. Um, not much of a change for you? No, I mean, last year I knew a little bit of it because uh, in spring ball, oh, well, in the fall initially, that's kind of what I learned. Um, so my base was kind of Mike. And then in the spring, he's like, all right, uh, just be ready for to learn Will. So I learned Will uh, with knowing Mike. Uh, we're in the same meeting room. So we, we you listen and hear everything for both positions. Um, so I, I kind of knew it. And then it's just getting out there, getting those reps, um, being able to take control. So how do you not put too much pressure on yourself to fill Diego's shoes? There's never going to be another Diego Fago, at least not for a long time at Navy. I mean, as a once in a generational type player, what, I mean, do you, on the one hand, you do have to fill his shoes, but on the other hand, you can't try to be Diego Fago. No, I can't. I can't. Uh, well, I'm six foot, 230 pounds. He's six, two, six, three, 240, uh, completely different build. So uh, our game and how we play is a little bit different. So I'm, I've just got to uh, learn from him in leadership aspects and uh, be like him in that matter. But then at the end of the day, I just got to go out and play football. So we were just talking to Coach Volker and asked him what you need to work on. And he said one of the things he talked to you about was lower body mobility or flexibility, I would believe, is what he said. What is he talking about and what do you, what do you want to work on? What, what, what it, you know, why do you want to improve that area? Because uh, that's where every play starts, uh, footwork, uh, just your, your stance. So getting in a good stance, getting my first step uh, correct and right um, will help me a lot uh, this year and just being more effective on the field. All right, thanks. All right, we'll make one more trip around. Scott Wyckoff. Yeah, Will, what's it like playing behind Biscuit and Busick? I mean, uh, you guys have come up together, and, and, and right now you're really putting your print on this defense together. Um, it's amazing. I mean, those guys, those guys are great. They do their job. They do what they're supposed to do, and it helps me uh, – make plays and uh, really what we focused on more this spring is uh, we have like an assist count. So it's not necessarily the person who makes the play, but say uh, Bernard and Busick, they, they do what they're supposed to do, pulling the tackle or the guard or the center, uh, freeing the gap open for the linebackers. Um, that's an assist for them. So it's giving them more credit where credit is due, even though we're the ones making the tackle. I think that's great. Um, they're great players, along with our other D-line, Clay Cromwell and the Raiders. Um, we just continue to get after it and doing our job, working as hard as we can. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Phil Bergman. What's your relationship like with Coach Volker, and what's he like to have as a position coach? Uh, I love Coach Volker. Um, every day, uh, what he says to us and what I've learned is every day is an interview. Um, you got to go in every day, and you got to learn and work as hard as you can because everyone around us, we're all Division One football players. So we all can get out there and play. So if you don't come in with that mindset, someone else can easily pass you up. And uh, as a coach, he he's pushing me as hard as I can, as hard as he can, and it's just continue to make me better. Thank you. Wags. Well, Will, do you feel uh, competition? I know Marcus Bleasard is listed behind you, and uh, I think Coach Volker said some positive things about Woodson Brooks, who's at that position. Um, you feeling competition? It's it's always competition. Um, you know, best best players going to play uh, at the end of the day. So I, I love the way they're working. It's it's amazing uh, just to see those uh, young guys, and I'm I'm a young guy too. So it's just amazing to see us out there working and the progress of uh, just learning the defense um, from the fall to now is just insane. Um, but yeah, I'm excited for uh, our linebacker room. It's going to be great. What about um, the responsibility of being a leader? You mentioned you're, you're still a sophomore, it seems hard to believe, but you know, you're going to be an upperclassman next year and you are one of the more veteran guys, especially at the particular position of Mike inside linebacker. But at both inside linebacker spots, I think you're looked up to as a leader among the group. Uh, talk about that responsibility, and are you, uh, you know, accepting it? Yeah, so for that responsibility, uh, a main thing for me is just uh, leading by example. 
I love um, my thing is that's my main thing. Always trying to be first wherever I can be, um, whether it's we're going to work out. We got weights at 345. I'm in there at 3, uh, 330, 335. First wait, waiting for coach to blow the whistle around in there, going out on the field uh, in the film room, getting extra watching, watching extra film, doing all the extra stuff, leading by example, um, you know, working, working my butt off. Um, just that that's one of the ways I like to lead and uh, push these guys around me. So is a big emphasis for you this spring been on learning the defensive calls? Because if I'm correct, the Mike linebacker sets the front a lot of times. Is that right? Yeah, that is correct. Um, throughout the spring, yeah, I've, I've uh, inherited that. Uh, yeah, I've inherited that and just had to learn a lot more more than just my job as the will linebacker, as what I knew last year, uh, learning a lot more about the whole defense, uh, more than just the linebacker's job. And as we all know, Diego is a disruptive force. He'd often run blitz and do other things. He got into the backfield. Mm -hmm. um, do you think that you can do that as well? I mean, again, I know you're not trying to be Diego Fago, but <laughs> They want the inside linebacker to do that stuff. Yeah, you know, I, I would like to think so and hope so. Um, you know, just had, had some plays last year in the fall uh, as, as much as I could uh, before I got hurt. But, um, yeah, I'd, I'd like to hope so. 